Hey guys, today I want to talk to you guys about uh, a no new topic. This is ASMR episode 4 of Sleeping with Burn, and today uh, I'm going to discuss driving. How I got started driving, what I thought about driving, and all of my experiences with driving a car. So, let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, back uh, when I was like, uh, you know, 15 or, or so, I was somewhat interested in driving, but uh, my parents were reluctant to allow me to be behind the wheel of a car because they thought I might not use it responsibly. But uh, when I was going to school, it annoyed me because I got out like an hour earlier than my sister almost, and then I had somebody come and pick me up, and then we also had to sit in a parking lot to wait for my sister to get out before we could ever go home. And I hated that because it made like a really long school day for me. So I was like dying to have a car, and I needed like a... And I also wanted to get a permit. So, I remember I, I got my permit a little bit late. I think a lot of people would get it at 15 and a half, and I was like 16 and a half when I could drive, like just with an adult. So, um, when I begged hard enough, my dad eventually took me out to a parking lot in his old Land Rover. And then... I was like ready to have fun and, and go driving, but the first thing he had me do was start the ignition. And then what he had me do was just put my foot on the brake and then take my foot off the brake and then put it back on. And then he showed me the different gears like park, uh, reverse, neutral, and drive. And I realized that in order to go forward, I had to move it out of park and put it in drive. So, when I moved the stick to drive, I remember I would just lift my foot off the brake and the car would coast forward a little bit. Then I had to brake put it again to make sure that it wouldn't coast forward. I also learned that in order to move, um, that in order to change gears, you pretty much always, always want to have your foot on the brake. Yes. Also, I really liked driving, uh, and then what we did later was uh, we went to a different parking lot. I think we did the parking lot of a bank, and I would just practice parking, and then like move from one spot to another, and all that stuff. I even got to go on some little uh, access roads that were uh, within the square mile. And then I could move, like, maybe from one parking lot to another. Now, technically, if you don't have a permit, it's against the law to have you driving on any public property. You can legally drive if you're on someone's private property, but outside of that, you cannot. So... I was going to say, um, for about two months, I was practicing driving. You know, I remember my dad was nice and calm for the most part when I drove with him, but when my mom took me out, the entire time she was pretty much screaming at me. Like, if I didn't brake as soon as she wanted, like, she'd, she'd really go off. And as well as that, she wanted me to stay, like, ten miles under the speed limit. Or, like, if I were not congruent with exactly what she wanted, she'd, she'd really start flipping up. So yeah, it was, it, w it was an interesting experience. And yeah, but to be fair, if I'm a 16-year-old guy never been behind a wheel, uh, it's perfectly normal for uh, parents to be freaked out. Later on that year, I took... Uh, a driver's ed course, and the course was pretty damn long, because that was required before you go for your permit. The per uh, the course, I think, was like all day Saturday, like literally like eight hours or something, ten hours, and then like eight hours Sunday. 
Um, I think it might have been two weekends. I mean, it would, it was long, but yeah, I mean, it, it was necessary. And they talked about all the different rules of the road, like if two cars meet at an intersection, the guy on the right gets to go first. And that was interesting to know, and then we also learned that if there's a school bus parked and it's got its sign out and it's flashing red light, uh, no matter what, and I mean no matter what, you cannot pass the bus. Uh, if it stops there for like an hour and you don't think it's moving, you just got to go around or take a detour because you cannot go past the bus. And the reason why is because there may be kids running out on the road, which you might hit. And yeah, they take it very, very seriously. Um, on top of that, yeah, we learned a bunch of different stuff, like, uh, you know, getting hit by a train. Apparently guys commit suicide by parking on a train track, and then they wait for the uh, train to come and hit them. And we basically learned that a train can crush a car as easy as a car can crush a Coke can. So, yeah, you you don't ever want to be near a train. After the course, I think one day, it was like on a Thursday or so, uh, we went out and took the written test where they would ask you a series of questions like when is it okay to use your high beams, and if it's foggy outside and it's hard to see, should you use your low beam headlights or your high beams, all that stuff. They also asked like who has right of way if two people meet at an intersection at the same time. And, of course, the person on the right always has the right of way. Yeah. When a car comes by uh, and it flashes its high beams, you don't know necessarily what's going on, but something's up. They might be telling you that your high beams are on, or they might be telling you there's a policeman on that way that you want to be aware of. Uh, there could be a lot of stuff going on when someone flashes their high beams at you driving by. But yeah, I remember I took the written exam that one day. I think I barely passed. You needed 15 out of 20 questions. And if you answered the first 15 right, then the computer would just cut off right there and deem you as a pass. But yeah, I took it one time and I got 15 out of 20 questions right. It was a close call, but I passed, and that day I had to submit a bunch of uh, documents, fill out some forms, and they processed my driver's permit. And it was really, really cool to get to have that, and I couldn't believe it. So yeah, I got the permit, and from that point I could actually drive on some real city streets. I remember my mom was still... Uh, under anxiety when I would be uh, behind the wheel with her in the passenger seat. Uh, my dad was a little calmer. Um, I remember in order to get my intermediate license, which happened later, you were required uh, to go through a, a series of driving lessons with an instructor. And there were like four different days that uh, my dad had an instructor come to my house and pick me up in a student driver car. And we would go out together, and we would do different things like the parallel park. We would do uphill park, downhill park, uh, talk about different rules, like you can't park within 15 feet of a fire hydrant or within 20 feet of a stop sign. And if you turn down a street or something, you got to do the turn signal at least like 100 feet in advance. And if you don't have a hundred feet, then you gotta turn on the turn signal just about as soon as possible. Yeah. Also, when it comes to driving, well... He had me driving around mostly neighborhoods to start. Nothing too bad, you know, we'd just go 20 miles an hour or so up and down streets, practice making turns. I think we drove all around neighborhoods for a while. And the first big stepping stone was when we went out onto a busy city street. Like one of the main streets. So, that was a little more nerve-wracking. But once you get on the street and drive, it's not too bad. I remember having to stop at a red light. Hmm. 
Another thing I didn't know was that uh, sometimes when it comes to making a left turn, you don't always need the green arrow. Sometimes you can make the left turn on the green light. But depending on the circumstances, you need to yield for if there's a car coming from the direction. And yeah, there's just a lot of different rules of the road going on out there. When I was driving around, it was just crazy. Now, one thing that pissed me off is like every now and again when I would drive and I'd want to stop, the driving instructor would just hit the brake on me. And I, I understand why he had a brake on his side that he could hit in case he has to, but it was pissing me off. I was just getting so pissed at the instructor that he kept hitting the brake on me. And I was like, come on, man. I know how to stop a damn car. But, you know, I mean, he's got his own concerns and all that stuff, so I understand that. But, yeah, I remember uh, most of the time if I would try to stop at a red light or a stop sign, or if I were taking a turn not sharp enough or something, he would automatically hit the brake. And, yeah, it was, it was annoying me a little bit. But anyhow, let's get to a happier topic. Um, I remember we went down multiple city streets and we just drove all around the city. And it was kind of fun getting to just go for a joyride and whatnot. We drove like to Broken Arrow. We drove like down to Bigsby. We went like all through Midtown Tulsa and all that stuff. It was crazy. I remember, I think it was like day four or day three that... Uh, he had me go on a highway. That was something new. I took like a big interstate highway. I got on an intersection and started driving down there. Drove down the road and then I started merging into the, the more left lane. Um, on highways, it's always safer to stay in the right lane because you want to be in a place where you can pull over if you have to. And also on the uh, left-hand side, well, it's just uh, easier to get trapped in there, so... It's smarter and safer to be in the right hand lane if you can have a choice. But yeah. Anyhow. I thought that it was quite interesting. I remember we went through a series of different lessons. I'm not going to tell you my driving instructor's name, but he was an old dude. He was like 60 at the time. He'd probably be over 70 now. And, yeah, he could be a little bit grouchy. He was cool at the same time, but yeah, he was an old dude that seemed like he were ready to retire. He had been teaching those lessons to people for a long, long time. And, yeah. A little bit... A little bit later... Um... It was summer was out when I did driving I mostly did driving with mom so it was I really liked it when mom let me drive her van she grew some trust in me and let me drive more and more uh, she would still flip out a little bit if I were incongruent with what she wanted but yeah you know if I were like two miles an hour faster than what she wanted or if I were uh, taking a turn too sharp oh boy Oh boy, I'd be in for a scream. But, yeah. Anyhow, let's see what else. Uh, a little bit later. Well, uh, it was time for me to uh, take a driving test in order to get my intermediate license. Because with a permit, basically, uh, you have to have an adult with you whenever you're behind the wheel, and it's not legal for you to be out by yourself. But, when you get the intermediate license, you no longer need an adult with you. Uh, you have a few restrictions, like there can only be one person outside the household in the car with you, and you cannot drive between the hours of like 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. So yeah, it's not like a, a full driver's license, but still... It's it's a lot better than the permit. Um. Anyhow, I failed the driving test 
two times. Uh, I got points counted off with the driving instructor because the first time I was going too slow, trying to be super careful not to speed and being very hesitant to go anywhere. And that got points counted off my score. You know. I think there was like a time when like I got like ten, like five points counted off because there was uh, an incoming UPS car half a mile down the road and I chose to wait for it and it's like what that car took two minutes to get here almost and you waited for that car yeah that's a point deduction you didn't need to do that but I typically think it's always better to be safe sorry so yeah I did not pass that first driving test uh, the second test I failed again and and basically I failed the parallel park because when I was coming out I hit the um, I hit the railings that they had me between which was just like me hitting another car so yeah that was a fail luckily during that year they got rid of the parallel park which made the third test so much easier and then um, it was still close. I was I had a different driving instructor that time. But yeah, we went out, we drove around the neighborhood and I passed the test. I passed it. And I got my immediate license. And at that point I no longer needed an adult with me when I drove. Um it was still a couple months when I got my first car. My first car was an Aztec Pontiac or Pontiac Aztec or whatever you want to call it. Twenty oh three model silver uh, it had carpet seats and I, th I thought it was a real nice car at the time um, not so much now because I don't really like cars with the carpet seats but yeah I was super excited about that car and like super excited to just be able to go out anywhere I wanted and it was just so freaking awesome I could go you know just be driving around places cool And yeah, that summer, I, re I remember I got to drive, like I drove to a summer camp, did some CITing. You know, if you don't know CIT, that means a counselor in training. And um, I also got to go out, look for other jobs, all that shit, all that stuff. And yeah, me having a car just opened so much uh, opportunity for me in life. So yeah, having a car really was quite great. Um, there were a, a lot of things that I could really look forward to with that. Yeah. Anyhow, thank you so much for uh, watching this. I hope this helped you sleep anyhow. Uh, I hope that you'll have a really wonderful day. But please subscribe and leave a comment down below. And there's a link to my Patreon. If any of you guys want to uh, support me on that, please do. Thank you so much, and you have a wonderful day.